do yes i'm adult yes i'm tr- i want to do things i want to go down certain pathways i want to explore this but at the same time it's like you don't want to feel like you're disappointing your parents or or letting them down because you know one thing caribbean parents don't fail to let you know is how much they sacrifice yes how much they work for you another episode i'm marissa and i'm I'm alicia also known as niobe hi and welcome to adulthood loading welcome welcome Welcome, alicia i'm so glad to be here thank you guys for having me of course of course is this like your first podcast yes absolutely Wow. I love podcasts. I listen to so many. Um, so this is just like an amazing experience. Wow. I'm <laughs> excited. I'm excited. I feel like we have a really good topic here today. Mm-hmm. So we know that a big part of just life, especially when we talk about living our best life, involves making decisions, right? And as simple as making a decision sound. It's not really that easy all the time. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's- do you want? And because it could be overwhelming, you know, just trying to figure out, well, what is the right decision or what should I do? I'm just not ready for all of this. It's just... <sighs> and because, especially like when we transition in adulthood, we kind of had things laid out for us before. And now it's so much like uncertainty. It's so much like, should I do this? You know, it's not as simple as just, yeah, I just go into grade 11. And that's just decided. Exactly. And now it's just like, okay, well, should I go to college? Should I not go to college? Should I do this? Should I not do it? It's just so much factors that we have to consider. And it's so much choices. And I feel like that's why it's so easy for us to feel overwhelmed, stuck, and unfulfilled you know, about this prospect of doing something that could potentially change our lives. Why is it so hard for us to make decisions as an adult? I know for a fact that that's something I struggled with. Um, And maybe my interpretation of that would be like, it's just so difficult to make decisions as adults because we're so pressured on the decision we're going to make. It's like, are we pleasing ourselves? Or are we pleasing? Or do we want to please like those that matter to us, like our parents or family or who we're in a relationship with? Like the decision isn't just about us. And I think that's why, or the, at least that's part of the reason why it can be so difficult. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that, Alicia. And then like, so you're thinking of all of these factors, like who might this affect? Yeah, um, it does affect so and so. How would it affect me in the future? How does it affect me now? Do the pros and cons like are the pros better than the cons? Like, what is it? And then you know, um, sometimes we might find ourselves making like collective decisions. So we're considering each other's feelings so much now that we're like no longer considering our own. And exactly. We're not thinking about it as much in the moment. So it's kind of like. Like imagine trying to give a speech or just even just trying to think in a room with like a bunch of screaming, like it's really hard. And so you can't even hear your own thoughts as clearly as you used to Mm -hmm. even make like an informed decision. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of people like, you know, that term they use quarter life crisis or whatever. (laughs) I think that's why a lot of people get to that point. They get to the point of like, okay, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Is this really about me? I don't know where I'm going. Help, I feel stuck. My back is against the wall. This is not a test. It's the real deal. Help me. Help me. Like, it's so much that leads to that. And I think it's because we, growing up, we're essentially trained or encouraged to do things that are pleasing to others that's essentially what how we're brought up 
It's like, okay, go to school and be a doctor because this this is what society likes to see or this is what society endorses or, oh, girls don't play sports. That's not a a girl thing to do. Like, you know, it's just so many different, Mm -hmm. so many different things. And it's like, okay, are we doing this because this is something that I genuinely enjoy or is it because it looks good? Mm -hmm. Listen, you're really hitting the nail on the head. And I think, especially for us in the Caribbean, it's very wet because we turn 18, you know, and that's like considered legal age. But then, you know, our parents still have such a big influence on our lives and on our decisions. And it's this term that I know Emma always used, but like adult children. Because- Yeah, oh my God, that's so true. Because it's like you, Yes, I'm adult. Yes, I'm. Tr- I want to do things. I want to go down certain pathways. I want to explore this, but at the same time, it's like you don't want to feel like you're disappointing your parents or or letting them down because you know one thing: Caribbean parents don't fail to let you know is how much they sacrifice. Yes, how much they work for you. Right? That's a buzzword. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So it's like when you're thinking about this, and and I love like you, like what y'all said these messages because we know what we've heard like when we were growing up like certain careers don't make money especially like creative creative careers and now you see there's such a shift in that just Mm -hmm. like now as millennials like influencers and literally the things like that exactly it's like now the industry that's bringing money and it's like you feel so conflicted because your parents are still like pushing these traditional things and it's like do I go against that will I still have their love will I still have their support it's just so much pressure and especially you know the background the childhood background that you have you know if your parents were one that kind of maybe use like emotional tactics to get you to do what they want or push you in the direction like you know I want you to make me proud x y and z you're going to carry that like as an adult you are you don't want to feel like if I make this decision for me, that I'm going to be disrespecting them or discredited everything that they did for me, you know? Yeah. So the terminology like hits the nail on the head, Emma, about adult children because we are grown technically, like we're over the age of 18. However, we're still looking for that approval. Mm-hmm. And some of our decisions are literally based on that approval. So like, I don't know if you guys have seen, but a lot of people like in our cohort or like our age, a little younger or older than us, a lot of them have went down like that traditional job role. Like, okay, some are doctors, some are lawyers and all of that stuff. But what you see that they're doing on the side, like on Instagram, like some are doctors that model, some are doctors that rap, some people in law school, but they, they make music. It's like, they're satisfying their parents, but they are, they're also like, they satisfy their parents by, okay, I'm going to get this job, but I still want to satisfy myself and go ahead and pursue this dream of mine that I've always pursued that you told me that I couldn't make money from, you know what I mean? And so that adult child per se still prevails because they still went the route of pleasing their parent by getting that standard job in the first place yeah but I I think it's also like how long are we able to maintain that that compromise of yeah what it is they want and trying to do that thing on the side because even thinking about a doctor for example Mm -hmm. they're busy right they're busy (laughs) very busy especially now during the pandemic yeah. Imagine balancing that in addition to a side hustle. If it is that they are only doing it because, you know, for their parent approval, I think it's very likely that eventually it, things are going to like come to an end because you have people who, let's say their family owns a business and they kind of just fell into it, but they didn't really want to do it. I feel yeah. like eventually it definitely would come to come to a head if it is something that they don't passionately feel like they connect with like if if it really was something that just their parents was pushing themselves didn't want it at all yeah I was thinking about um so if you really just not connecting with this job that can leave you 
you know, like quarter life crisis or just feeling stuck in general. And then, you know, sometimes it's a thing where the job doesn't end. You just keep doing this for the rest of your life. But how happy are you? How, 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 how was your mental health? And like, just going to do a job that you are not connected to this day in and day out. I just wonder how that affects you and just like how satisfied you are with life in general. And I know that, like, we've been talking about all of these messages. So like sometimes, um, and you were talking about the background too, and I was thinking about like, you know, maybe if you came from a lower socioeconomic background too, sometimes that's why like these um, jobs to like be a doctor or be an accountant are the ones that are pushed for because in, in sometimes your guardian's mind or whoever, it's like, well, there is no, there is no, what if this doesn't work out? Yes, you don't have a choice. There is no that like cushioning. And, um, and sometimes it's just out of fear. <laughs> like, I fear for you in the future. And, um, um, and sometimes it's also like the opinions of other people. <laughs> so sometimes parents are operating doing this because it's like the opinions of other people or you now. And sometimes we learn that too. We learn by seeing, we learn. Uh, like, I, I think I say this a lot. <laughs> like, we don't learn as kids what people tell us not to do. We learn what we see. And so if the people around us, like, you know, are very careful in making decisions, they really value the opinions of others to the extent where it's like, okay, their opinion trumps mine. And we've had this dynamic where, like, with the kid, it's like um, the adult is saying, no, you do as I say, and that's it. And so it it's that whole like message. It's this like, it just goes into your subconscious and you don't even really know that's the messaging if you're not like aware of it when you're functioning at, like based on that when you're older. So now it's like, oh my gosh, should I make this decision at all? Because like, if it isn't like, um, it doesn't have this like amazing outcome, like what do I, what do I even do now? It wasn't a good decision there's this message that like change is a terrible thing. So even just making a decision in the first place, is like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's, that's actually a good point because like even a lot of kids, like when they start a career path, if they want to change, it's like, no, I already started. Like I have to finish now. That's mine. And, and, I, that, and, I'm and that's, and that's, them. and that's what you're going to settle for. I'm going to stick beside them. So it's just so much pressure. And it's the pressure that is outside pressure. Because if you were to leave it up to them, the outcome would have been completely different. But a lot of people make these decisions not only thinking about themselves. And that's what makes the adulthood process so difficult. Mm. That's so true. That's so true. Like. It's like, the, it's like what Emma is saying with the whole perfectionism and not wanting to make a bad decision. But when you really think of it deeper, it's like, who is, who is gonna determine that it's a bad decision? Who are you people? Who is making the, the guidelines on what a good decision would look like and what a bad decision would look like? And I think that is, it's like, like you were saying, Alicia, that's gonna be like the, almost like the test of adulthood. Because it's like, when are we going to get to the point where we feel comfortable basing it on ourselves and our situation and not weighing other people's opinion. opinions so highly, which we know is just so challenging, especially because for us, we're like doing adulthood with like a hundred eyes on us too. Yes, you have your parents, but you also yeah. have your peers, right? Because with social media and everything, like you see in people out here, traveling the world, you know, doing big things. And it's like, could I do that? Is that, is that something I could do as well? Or is this not within my reach? You know, and also possibly being concerned about what they may be saying as well. You know, well, like people think that I'm, so if people found out that I dropped out of school and decided to be a dancer, mm -hmm. um, a backup dancer or something, what, a, what, a, what would they say about me, you know, in their WhatsApp group chats? I'm sure, like, we'd be thinking about stuff like that as well. Like, you don't understand how relatable that is. <laughs> like, 
like for example for me I've been wanting to create a YouTube channel from I don't know how long like well I should say I know how long like pretty much 2014 2015 Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to establish a YouTube channel and I haven't because of the fail like what people gonna say about me um people gonna people won't watch it um it's just so many things that play out play in my mind but it's always about the other person or the other people it's never about how I feel about it it's about how I would be perceived as simple as something like that so imagine a bigger situation where somebody switches career path if somebody says they're going to move to another country if somebody says they want to get married at a certain age those are huge decisions and people make those decisions based on how they are perceived by others, how their family feels about it, how their friends or peers or people on social media might feel about it. And that's the thing that we have to acknowledge as adults or adult children is that we do, like Marissa said, have to get to a point where we have to decide, okay, is this about me or is this about other people like is it going to come to a head where I'm making decisions based off of my other's opinion about me or my opinion about me and I think what you said is really powerful so you said well, we have to decide it can definitely be helpful for us deciding and then just like being aware like this change needs to happen in the first place because sometimes we might just be in denial like, what's your problem me I don't, I don't have a problem. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Like, we know this change needs to happen, but we're like, I'm just going to ignore it because this feels safe to me. You know, like, like if I go against the green, this isn't safe to my brain. So my brain is telling me, no, no, no. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, even okay. though I'm feeling unfulfilled and I'm feeling like I know there needs to be a change. I need to take this risk. It's like, sometimes we get in our like procrastination state because maybe we're thinking it might just right itself. You know, like things are just going to yes. fix itself. And if I just keep on doing what I'm going to do and I just manifest it, it might work. But I don't think we make, sometimes we don't always make the connection that if I don't make the change, if I don't be assertive, if I don't say this is what I want to do, then you're going to kind of still be stuck in that rut, you know? And <clears throat> I think a part of that even the whole process, us trying to get out of that rut and trying to figure out, well, what should I do? That's when you kind of see us kind of shift and like asking for advice of others. Mm -hmm. But there's a, there's a tricky thing sometimes about advice. Sometimes we ask advice, ask for advice, but we kind of know what we want to do. So it makes you question like, yeah. why are you really asking for advice then? Like, what are we trying to get there? Approval. Mm -hmm. that's really what it right is <laughs> yeah because what if the person happens to tell you to do the exact thing that you want to do now you know okay now the decision I would make it is the best decision because now this next person also says make this decision mm -hmm. so now I have to go ahead to do it <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 really why it's just unfortunate that that's how we process things but that's really what it is about it just it makes me think of like another layer so you ask somebody like you're saying for approval right you ask them about it for approval you ask for their advice and then now it's like also like if something goes wrong like they said this is yeah. the right choice so i'm good like i didn't make a bad choice you know they also said so it's not me on my own like I didn't make the wrong decision. If there's even a wrong decision to begin with. That's so true, Emma. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I think a lot of us, like the way we perceive things have a lot to do with what we used to watch and hear. Yeah. So some, like, even like if you, like our perception of love and how it, it was supposed to happen. It's kind of warped until we become an adult and we see things for what it is. The lies, there you the go. Lies. Or our perception of follow your dreams and it would all work out. Mm -hmm. That's warped because until we become an adult, we realize what it is. Because even if it's something that you're passionate about or you care for, 
that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy. But the movies didn't tell us that. The Disney, the Disney shows didn't tell us that. And so when we end up in this now reality situation as an adult, we're like panicking, like, you know, um, Mr. Krabs, when he's like figuring out what is going on around him. That's how we feel. <laughs> That's how we genuinely feel as adults because sometimes like, for example, like when we all met, would have been pursuing our undergrad. We know that this is something that we might've wanted to do, but there were hills and valleys. And sometimes you might even question like, why am I, why am I doing this? Like, am I doing the right thing? And it's, it could be that, yeah, it could be, maybe you're not doing the right thing, but it could also be that, yeah, you are doing the right thing or you're doing what, you were meant to do but it isn't easy whoever who told you that it's going to go perfectly it's not going to go perfectly but that's just how life is and so you learn that the older did you get the older you get like you don't necessarily learn that as a kid you learn that as an adult and being able to maneuver that journey or those processes is what makes adulthood not so easy sometimes because you come sometimes need a reality check or sometimes you need like a self check to see like what is going on with me like why things are turning out this way and you don't you're I feel as though um nobody could essentially prepare you for that mm -hmm. um you have to have that I guess self-awareness to a certain extent to realize okay maybe I need to take a step back and figure out like why am I feeling stuck like what is going on and literally that's a part of being an adult yeah. Girl, yeah. you are preaching you yeah. are, no seriously because I think it's that whole process of learning to trust ourselves you know, like you're saying, learning to trust ourselves, learning to recognize when we're uncomfortable, learning to recognize when we don't like something and actually to honor that too. Because when we're growing up, we're in situations, we're in environments where we kind of have to just go along with whatever experience that we're experience, experiencing. So like, let's say if a decision is made by your parents, you kind of have to go along with it because you're a child, right? And so you, we become and condition to that kind of like I don't like this but let me just go along with it anyway right because what other choice do I have but now we're in a situation where we can make a choice but we almost feel more content ignoring those intuitions and gut feelings because we're just so used to it and it's like you say we have in adulting we have to build that like muscle that muscle of self-awareness and that muscle to recognize I don't like this I want to switch and to, to know the difference between that feeling and another feeling, which is I'm uncomfortable, but this is still something that I want. I want. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's what makes it difficult because some people, I think also sometimes confuse themselves into believing that something that they don't want is what they want. Mm -hmm. And if that's another layoff. Yeah. So you have to really become self-aware and a part of that sometimes can be either you're just that good at talking to yourself and being self-aware or sometimes you just might need help and talk to somebody else to help you maneuver through it you know I personally um see a therapist because sometimes I just don't know what the hell I'm doing <laughs> I just need the help mm -hmm. and then, you know that's okay because what that also says is that you're willing and responsible enough to want better for yourself mm -hmm. and that's really what adulthood is it's like you still have that kid in you that wants to reach the biggest heights and achieve the goals and pursue your passions but then what what the layer that comes with adulthood is the bills and responsibility and the you know abiding by society's guidelines and being able to maneuver all of that while still being happy, that's, that's the level of adulthood. That's the level that's different from being a child and an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like all of that to take into consideration. And I think, you know, it can be so hard because we don't know how it's going to go. Like, 
there's uncertainty. We don't know how our decisions are going to go. So it's almost like, should I just not do anything? And I'm like, we'll see how that goes or should I do something? And yeah, that within itself is so stressful, like the not knowing, like, okay, I need this to work for me because I, I, I'm really passionate about it, but I, I, I don't know how it's going to turn out. And I think that's why, like, even with the pandemic, that was a good example of why people were so stressed. They just did not know how things were going to turn out. Like anxiety and depression levels literally skyrocketed during the pandemic. Bruh. Because, of the, <laughs> because of the not knowing. Um, but that's the thing about life, right? Like, they they usually say, okay, your gifts would make room for you, or AKA your passions would make room for you, and that's literally where the the self trust and the trust that, okay, what I really care about, kind of has to work out for me because what else am I gonna do? Mm-hmm. You know, like what else am I gonna? What other purpose do I have if this isn't it? you know so a lot of people just try to i guess be winging it i mean all of us was out here winging it (laughs) there is no blueprint (laughs) like there really is because we're all so different like i think too there's this thing where we may like constantly be looking for or we, we hear about, or we go constantly like searching or like we're researching and reading or looking for shortcuts or like clear cut, perfect answers that really just don't exist. So that's why sometimes we're just like, let's just delay the decision making process because, you know, I need to find the yeah, so. decision. And, you know, it can be helpful. You know, you want to look at all your options. It's just like, are you really looking for your options? Or are you like procrastinating a bit? Because it's like you said, like sometimes we know the decision that we think works best for us, but that doesn't make it any easier to actually make the decision. So, yeah, I think too, uh, something that we, the challenge with us too, that like we face, especially like being millennials and just seeing like all these different career paths that exist now. We have so much like th- different things that we want to do. And it's just like, which one, like which, like which passion should I invest in more? Which like, what decision should I make? And I think that too could be like, just so overwhelming that we just kind of don't make a decision at all. Mm-hmm. And then it's kind of just like, you're more so focusing on, I like, could do this. I could do that. There's so much things I could do. I don't know which one to do. And then what you, what you find is you don't ever make a decision. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You only decide to just be stuck in like that kind of that limbo. And I think if we start to speak about, you know, what we can do to kind of overcome this almost decision anxiety, it's just to make a decision. Like just say, you know, let me, let me try a thing. And I'm not saying y'all, you have to make a, a big old, you have to do start doing this with big life altering decisions, right? It could be small. You start small, start with something small and work your way up. And yeah. it makes it easier to make additional decisions like just that you could build on, just make you say, yeah, this worked out. So let me just, let me just try something else now. Yeah. You can always make another decision. Like once you make a decision, you're not just like, I'm confined. What well, I mean, I'm confined yeah. to the contract as well. But like, I'm confined to this, like, forever you can make another decision and you have the power to do that like you you can do this but before we even make a decision we have to like address that a decision for us needs to be made in the first place i really do like your point emma because it it just reminded me that this thing that i used to tell myself it's like i have the right to change my mind it's okay. Just because you make a decision doesn't mean like it has to be set in stone unless you want it to be. But it doesn't have to be. And that's okay. A lot of us do things that we thought we might have liked and along the journey we realize, okay, this maybe isn't for me. That's literally a part of being who you are or being true to yourself. And that is a journey. 
um, some people go into career paths and they know, okay, I'm only going to be doing this for a certain amount of time because afterward, I want to be doing this when I'm at a certain age. Totally okay. Some people decide, no, this is what I'm going to be doing all my life. I love it so much. Also totally fine. Like, it's like, <laughs> you have the right to change your mind. And that's fine. Um, so I, I'm just really glad you made that point because it's true. You've been spending some amazing points. Like, what do you think also would help when it comes to making decisions? I think what would also help is I guess like how we're getting older now, we are pretty much the next adults. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still coming to terms with that. Look at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. You know, and I feel like what would help would be us encouraging our kids that it's okay. It's okay to not know. It's okay to want to figure things out it's okay it's just okay and I think that's re like just reduce the pressure mm -hmm. a little bit because when you do that you, you you'll be amazed at how much more free the person feels to go after something that they care about when the pressure is off them and they're just able to express and I think that's why the um, like the creative industry, whether it's social media or art or YouTube or whatever, is succeeding the way that it is because people have that platform or that opportunity to just express. And like, that's how people assess kids, even like when they're young or like in, in preschool and whatever, just let them be themselves. And then they see the talents come out. They'd be like, oh, wow, Timmy actually is actually really good at building things. You just leave him to let him do that and you're able to figure that out as time. <clears throat> Sorry, as time goes on. Or Alexa, she seems to really enjoy creative writing. Mm -hmm. Like you just letting them, you're taking the pressure off them. That's really what it's about. It's about them expressing themselves, learning themselves. And that's what I think when we become parents, or even parents of the day of today, who still have like young children, just take the pressure off the child don't stress the child out just let them like time will tell where their passion really lies and you would see it and when you see it as a parent you do things to like to encourage them say hey i noticed that you really like, enjoy reading what about it that you enjoy when you take the pressure off to say oh you need to go to college this is what you need to do um you need to do this when you study this is what you need to study when you go to college that you're putting your child in a box and then it makes them feel like, okay, this is what they must do to not disappoint. And that creates so much, so much distress that they might not know themselves. And then by the time they hit 25, they're just like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Like you don't want that to happen. So I would say to prevent the stuck feeling that we feel as an adult, like as parents, or teachers or whoever it is that are in that child's life just try to take the pressure off and assure them that it's going to be okay yeah yeah that's some that's some good some powerful words there girl because um i think that is definitely something that is going to be so important for us to pass on to the next generation because i think we definitely did experience that level of pressure um and i think that did influence how we view decision making and that's why you know it's going to be so important for us to reframe that that whole narrative like you say um it's it's definitely important to explore and to have that level of exploration and to kind of not feel like something is just as simple as a right decision or wrong decision and also see that things it's not a wrong decision is not automatically failure it's not automatically that if I make this decision and it doesn't pan out the way I want it to, that I could never achieve or that I can't continue to succeed. You know what I mean? And that's why it's so important that we need to, when we become parents, if you're already parents, it's going to be important to give your children space to explore, to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes and make additional decisions that, you know, will guide them. And it's going to be important for us as well to get that, to kind of, shake off 
that perspective and kind of get used to trying things out, get used to failing and picking yourself back up because success isn't linear, as we all know. It might be hard to accept that, but it's not linear. And I think even if you make a decision and it doesn't go the way you want it to, you are getting information about what it is maybe that you want. And you are getting information about maybe what you need to do more of. So it's to let go of that like lack in mind thinking and realize like, okay, whatever decision I make, it's going to take me closer to my goal. Whether it's like a straight, a straight shot or it might be a little zigzag, it's still going to help me get there and just, just kind of keeping that in mind and then passing that on to the next generation as well. You know, when we're making decisions, I think it's so easy to say, like, we made the wrong choice because, like, now we have all this information that we did not have. Like, like we're being so hard on ourselves, and it's like, yeah. we did not know this would happen, though. We we just didn't, don't, didn't know, and then it's so easy for us to, like, um, just start this whole, like, negative self-talk, like, you're not good at making decisions. You were never going to be good at this. I knew it. You should have known better. How would you know? Just how? Not everybody's advice is going to be suited for you because they might have some similar choices to you or the same choice in one regard. Let's say you're both going out for the same job, but they're not in the same situation that you are in. Like no two individuals are the same. So it's kind of like what you were mentioning, Alicia. So it would definitely be helpful to do what feels best for you based on your situation, you know? Even when you don't make a decision, like, you're still making a decision, like. Yeah. A decision for things to stay the same. And yeah, that can be really difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think it's really just, like just tying in like all of your points. It's really just about staying true to who you are. That's what it really is about. Because when you kind of take a step back and you realize, okay, why am I feeling stuck? Is it about me or is it about others? What is causing me to feel this way? Am I, do I feel as though I'm not giving enough? Do we are doing enough? Do I feel like I'm, I'm doing enough? I might feel like I'm doing enough. All right. So that's your answer. So then why do you feel like you're stuck? Do you Mm -hmm. feel like you're comparing? Is it because you're comparing yourself to others? Why you feel stuck? Yeah. If the answer is yes, then okay. If you're satisfied with yourself, you're doing absolutely fine. Yeah. So it's like, it's just that matter of looking, taking that moment of looking at yourself and feeling, exploring those feelings. And that's where the the pressure comes off, you know? And then like the point that Marissa made about it not being black and white, even if the decision didn't go well, you still learned something. Mm -hmm. You still learned something about yourself. And that is valuable information. That's something you didn't know before. So now you're going, you're like she said, you're going to be able to get closer to your goal. And then the point you were making Emma about you know, sometimes not making the decision is the decision. As long as you're okay with it and not making moves based off of how you're going to be perceived by others, that's the key. So in other words, staying true to who you are. Sometimes looking at other people can sometimes make you a little bit more accountable to yourself, but making decisions based on how you will be perceived by others is where the danger lies. So you have to stay stay true to who you are. And obviously you only learn that through experience and through time. And so just being gentle with yourself, not being so hard on yourself, like Marissa says, in the process is the key. Because even though these other people seem to be doing well or are really doing well, they're still learning. It's still a process. It's still a journey. They're learning things about themselves as well. Nobody has it figured out. And as long as you remember that, 
You're going to be absolutely fine. Wow. You sure you're not with the podcast number four? I'm like, we could close right there. I'm, saying, I'm like, look, Alicia, close all the whole episode with these gems. <laughs> so- channel coming. <laughs> and you know, like, I need to do a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah seriously, do it. We def- Emma and I definitely went through that whole process. Is anyone going to listen? Does this make sense? Like, should we do it? Is this even a good episode? And now look at us. Season two. Just out here. With guests. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, but really, like, thanks so much for joining us today. I feel like this was a little motivational for me too, you know. So thanks everyone for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Alicia, let them know where they could follow up with you at. Mm-hmm. Well, mainly by Instagram. Mm-hmm. So um my name on Instagram or handle, I should say, is Niobe Janae. You could probably drop that in there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> but once you're on my Instagram, you'll see all my other links to my soon to come YouTube channel. Okay. Hey. I'm y'all. It's hey. gonna happen for the years. Hey. Yeah. So woo, woo.